Hi guys, thanks for joining me today. I'm Marilyn and my channel is Making with Marilyn. Now I do all things crafty, but on today's video, I'm gonna use this metal sublimation blank. You can see on the back it's silver, on the front it has a sublimation coating on it and it's white. Now these are very, very thin, so you have to be careful with them, but hopefully they sublimate well. I've had this for quite some time. I haven't used them yet, so we're gonna try this out together. So I have this sublimation blank, I got it off of Amazon, and if it turns out well, I'll put a link to those in the video description. It came in a package of six. I'm gonna use some HTV Runt sublimation paper. Now this is my go-to paper. I have a heat resistant glove, heat resistant tape, and then I have some butcher paper to protect the mats on my heat press. Now I'm just gonna use a little craft press for this. It's a nine by 12, that's plenty big. You could use whatever heat press you have. Now the picture that I'm gonna print on this is a picture of when my husband and I were camping with friends. He loves to camp, he loves his Jeep. This picture's for his office and so that's what I'm going with. I'll use my computer to get the print ready in Inkscape. You can use any design software that you want or any printing software that you want. I'm gonna print it on my Epson EcoTank 15,000. Now that is a wide format printer but it's not required for this project because these are only eight by 10. Now the Epson EcoTank 15,000 wasn't meant to be a sublimation printer. It wasn't marketed to be one, but crafters tend to use them for sublimation printers. It has hippo ink in it, and I think the prints come out really, really nice. So we're gonna jump over to the computer. I'm just gonna take a minute to show you how I set this up to print. We'll watch it print, and then we'll meet right back here. Now, if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing that. If you do, tap that bell and then select the all notification. That way YouTube lets you know anytime I upload new content. Now here's the image that I'm going to use. And first of all, I wanted to make sure that my paper was the right size in Inkscape. So I went to File, Document Properties, and you can see it's set to US letter. That's the size of my sublimation paper, so I'm happy with that. If it's the wrong size, you can click right here and you can change it to the correct size. We'll go ahead and click out of that. Now with sublimation, you need to print in the mirror image unless you're putting it under something and it's coming up through the glass. That is very rare. So most of the time when you're doing a sublimation project, you mirror your image. So with my image selected, I'm gonna to go to Object and flip horizontal. Now, if I printed this right now, anything that's off the side of the paper would be cut off. It wouldn't print right. So now let's go up to Object, and let's turn this 90 degrees. It doesn't matter if it's counterclockwise or clockwise, as long as it all fits on this paper. Now, my image is 8 by 10. The sublimation blank that I'm printing it on is 7 and 7 eighths by 9 and 7 eighths. So a tiny bit of this is gonna get cut off, but I'm okay with that. Making this slightly larger than the blank will make it really easy to place my blank on top of the design. So I'm gonna go up to File, Print. I'm printing on my Epson EcoTank 15,000. I'm gonna go right up here to Page Setup, change that to one-sided, go to Color, make sure it's on color, and then click right over here on advanced, and I'm gonna change that to high quality. Now I use the same drivers that were the default drivers when I got the printer. I did upload new drivers, and I didn't think that it did nearly as good a job, so I just reset it back to the default drivers. Most people feel like they can get better prints when they update the drivers. For me, that just wasn't the case, so I reset them. All right, let's go ahead and click print and then we'll go over and watch this print. Now, if you're new to sublimation, you're probably wondering, why is that picture so dull? 
With sublimation, the ink is fairly dull until you add that high heat for an extended period of time. So I fully expect the colors on this to pop a whole lot more once we're done. Now before we put that on our sublimation blank, we need to take off the protective coating on top of this. It's just a very thin piece of plastic, and it's just to keep it from getting scratched so that the sublimation coating on it doesn't get scratched. And so sometimes this is a trick that'll work. Put some heat resistant tape on it, really get it down tight onto the blank or onto the plastic coating, and then slowly peel this back. All right, so it did work. I wanna to try to keep my hands off this blank because you don't want the oil from your hands to keep the sublimation process from happening as well. So I'm gonna hold this in down and I'm just gonna peel this back on itself. Now I told you earlier that these are really thin and I actually bent it up on one corner but I don't think that's really gonna show once I get this in the frame. Now I'm putting pressure down instead of holding it in the air so it doesn't bend. Now let's go ahead and put it on top of our paper face down. So I have my picture facing up and then I wanna turn this over and put it face down and I want to try to keep as much of this side of the picture as possible. And I can pretty much center it from top to bottom. But I want to try to keep this side of the picture. So I'm just going to move it over into place. I have just a tiny bit of ink showing on this side, at the top and at the bottom. I think that looks good. So now what I want to do is go ahead and put some tape on top of the back of the frame onto the paper. That's just going to keep it from moving when I put it up onto my press and when I'm lowering the platen of the press. Now I'm going to heat this paper side up at 340 degrees for 90 seconds. This is my first one to make, but that's what the instructions on Amazon say. So the first thing that I'll do is I'll go ahead, turn my heat press on, get it set to the right time and temp. Once it's up to temp, I'll be back. Now while that finishes getting up to temperature, I want to go ahead and see what the pressure's like on this. I think it could use just a little bit more, so you can't see it, but there's a knob on the back that you twist to make it tighter or looser. Just a little bit tighter. Okay, I think that'll be fine. Sublimation really doesn't take a ton of pressure. Now, I want to protect these from getting any sublimation ink on them. So I'm going to go ahead and put a double layer of butcher paper on top of the pads. Then my picture. And then I haven't had any issues with this bleeding through the top, but just to be safe, I'm gonna put more on top. Now it's going past 340. What did I set this for? Oh, I set it for 390. All right, let me go ahead and get that down and then we're ready to go. All right, 340 degrees for 90 seconds. Now, because I can't see the pads with the paper in the way, I wanna make sure that I really do have them centered up on the base. I don't wanna accidentally not have good pressure. I think that looks good, so let's go ahead and start. And now I'm doubting myself. Okay, there's the end. I think it can move a little bit to the left. All right, let's go. All 
All right, I went ahead and just turned it off because this is the only thing I'm gonna be working on right now. I'll go ahead and swing that away and then I'm gonna go ahead and just set this down for a few minutes so it can cool off. Now the reason I'm doing that, not only is it pretty hot right now, but with sublimation, if you shift your paper on this blank while it is still super hot, then you're going to cause some blurring. So I want to let it cool off just enough so that it's below a sublimation temperature. Now if you want to speed up the cooling down process, you can use a porcelain tile or a ceramic tile. Just place it on whatever you're working on and that really will help it cool off more quickly. I'm a little impatient, so I tend to do this quite often. All right, that just barely feels warm. Let's go ahead and flip it over. And you can see the ink that transferred that was outside of the blank. If I didn't use this butcher paper, that would actually now be on my mat or the pad of my heat press. It looks like it only went through one layer, but I like to use two layers just in case. Okay, now because these blanks are so thin and they can bend real easily, I'm going to hold this down while I pull up the tape. Because if I pull up that tape, it could bend this backwards. They are very, very thin. Now that doesn't mean I don't like them, it just means I need to be careful. All right, let's go ahead and look at it. And it's gorgeous. That is beautiful. Let's get the rest of the tape off, then I'll show it to you really closely. So there's the ink that's left on my paper. And there's the image. Look at how bright that is. I have to tilt it, otherwise that ring light is going to glare on it. That's gorgeous. He is going to love this. So, so nice. Now, I didn't show you earlier, but I do have a frame for this. I wanted to go with the plain black frame because I thought that would be the most masculine thing I could find, and it's the most masculine thing I had in my house. And I am going to have to get a different frame because this one doesn't have a hook on it. So I had a picture in this and I had it sitting on a little picture easel, but I think a black frame for this would be great. That is really gorgeous. Now you probably noticed that the background of this one before I put the image on was white. They do also have these in a silver, more of a plain natural silver metal look. If you use one of those, and if any part of your image is white, it's going to look silver. So it would distort the look of your photograph some. But if you want that kind of rustic look, I think that could be pretty cute too. I have sublimated on a silver camping mug before, and I like how it turned out, but you just have to have the right design for it. Because I will probably use these for photographs. I wanted to get the white blank instead of the silver one. So thank you so much for watching the video today. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, leave them in the comment section under the video. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and until my next video, bye-bye.